Now others, they'll say that their outer appearance is merely an expression of who they are. And while I understand that, that sentiment, while I understand that statement, I can't buy it. And the reason why I can't buy it is because it's the season of wearing costumes, if you get what I mean by that. See, a lot of us, we like to dress ourselves up. We like to make sure... I think that many of us, we would answer such a question with little to no hesitation. If somebody was to ask you, well, who are you? We would tell them our name. We would give them our name. Some of us, we may go into some more details. We may say what we do for a living to make sure somebody knew who we were. We may even tell them our passions as well, just so that they can have a sense of an idea as to who we are. Now, while some of us may know who we are, there are others who wouldn't answer that question uh, with, with, with such swiftness. They may be a bit hesitant. They may be a bit unsure as to who they are. So as we enter into the season of wearing costumes and cosplay and wearing masks, I want to focus on you. I want to focus on the real you, if you know what I mean by that. Now, I don't know about all of you, but when I was just a little boy, my parents, they made sure I knew who I was. It first started off with them making sure that I knew that my name was Leo. They drilled it into my head what my name was. They also drilled it into my head where I came from. They made sure that I knew my history. They had this sense of idea that they did not want history to repeat itself. And so the history of my people, if you will, was a part of who I was. So when I was just a little boy, my parents, they wanted to know who I was at the start. They would tell me to never let somebody disrespect my name. In other words, my parents, they would say to me that I should never let someone disrespect who I was. And I'm sure that this was probably the same for all of you as well. You see, who I was and who I could grow up to be that was very important to my parents. I, I can still hear the voice of my dad saying to me today, don't ever let somebody tell you that you can't be somebody. I can still hear my dad telling me and my brother today to never let somebody tell us that we can't be what we want to be. And so I say to all you that I'm very grateful for, for how I was raised. I am very grateful for how my parents brought me up to know who I am. I tell you today that I still benefit from the fact that my parents, that they taught me that I can be whatever I want to be, not to listen to somebody tell me otherwise, I benefit from it today because I am confident in the person that I am today. I have peace of mind today in knowing who I am today. You see, I want you to understand today that because I know who I am, because I am confident in who I am, 
because I have peace of mind, because my parents raised me to be the best me, I want you to understand today that I have purpose. I want you to understand today that I have a sense of power, that I have a sense of authority, that I have a sense of control over myself. And what I want you to understand today is when you know who you are, you can share in with that same sense of confidence. You can share in with that same sense of power and authority. You can share in with that same peace of mind over yourself. You don't have to be dependent on somebody telling you who you are. You ought not be reliant on somebody telling you who you are. See, with that in mind, you don't want to be someone who doesn't know who they are. You see, when you don't know who you are, you, you have a lot to lose, don't you? When you don't know who you are, you will lack confidence. When you don't know who you are, you will struggle to find purpose and meaning in your life. When you don't know who you are, you will struggle mightily to have peace of mind. You see, when you have no confidence in yourself, you lack power. You lack authority. You lack control over yourself. And all in all, when you don't know who you are, you can be easily deceived. You can be easily manipulated. You can be easily controlled. You see, that's what my parents did not want for me. They didn't want it for my brother and my sister as well. And I can imagine, all right, that your parents didn't want that for you as well. Now, one thing that many of us have come to realize as we have gotten older, as we have gotten wiser, if you will, is that the world, it don't want you to feel empowered, does it? The world, it don't want you to have any power, any control at all. You see, the world, it desires to have full control over you. You see, the world, it wants to have power and control over your thoughts. It wants to have control of your emotions. Therefore, the world, it wants to control what you do, your actions. Now, if you, if you don't believe me, or if you haven't come to realize this yourself, just pay attention to how the world tries to influence you all the time to, to think, to merely think a certain way. Because again, if your thoughts are controlled, your emotions and your actions, they are controlled as well. Who you are is being controlled. You see, the world, it will try to force in an identity on you. The world will try to make you someone who you are not. And by trying to force an identity on you, the world will often try to make you doubt who you are. The world does this with the motivation of stealing, of taking your identity and making you conform to what the world says is acceptable. I don't know if you're following me today. Therefore, may I suggest to you that it is critical. It is critical that you know who you are truly so that you are not controlled by the world, so that you are not controlled by another. Mm -hmm. And so again, I ask you the question today, do you truly know who you are? Who are you? 
Now some, they will point out that their true identity, they, they will point to this right here. They'll point to this right here. They'll point to this right here and this right here as well. They will point to their outward appearance as their outward looks is who they are. I mean, if you think about it for a moment, all of us, we carry around our wallets and inside of our wallets, we have a license or an ID card. And yes, our information is on that, that, that card there, but that information, you are not believed to be that person unless your face appears on that card. Your, your face is on that card and the, the thumbprint is, is on that card as well. And so I, I wonder today, for all of those that think this way, is your outward appearance, is that truly who you are? Is your outward appearance your true identity? To some, the answer to that question is a yes. Now others, they'll say that their outward appearance is merely an expression of who they are. And while I understand that, that sentiment, while I understand that statement, I can't buy it. And the reason why I can't buy it is because it's the season of wearing costumes, if you get what I mean by that. See, a lot of us, we like to dress ourselves up. We like to make sure that we look good to the outside world. And, and so we do our best to, to mask who we are. We don't want people to see who we really are. We may let some folks in, but we don't let everybody in to who we are. We, we cover ourselves. We, we dress ourselves up. We make ourselves look good. Now, don't get me wrong. There's absolutely nothing wrong with, with making sure you look good. I do my best every Sunday to make sure I look good. And, and, and there ain't nothing wrong with that. However, I say to you today that our outward appearance, you should understand today, that is not who you are. That is not your real identity. You see, your real identity lies elsewhere, doesn't it? You see, Peter, he wrote on this thought. When he said in his first letter, in the third chapter, the third and the fourth verse, Peter said that one should not let their adornment be merely outward, arranging their hair, wearing gold and, and putting on fine apparel, you know, dressing yourself up to, to look good. Peter said, no, you should also focus on the hidden person of the heart. Now I want you to get this. Peter, Peter, he was saying that, hey, there ain't nothing wrong with you dressing yourself up and, and looking good. But, but what Peter really wanted you to focus on was that hidden person of the heart. Now, who is that? Who is this, this hidden person that Peter is talking about? This hidden person of the heart. Well, the hidden person of the heart is who you are on the inside. You see, Peter, he tells us that, that we need to make sure that that person that's on the inside, we need to make sure that that person look just as good, if not better, than that person that's on the outside. Now, why does he say this? Why, why did Peter tell us this? Well, he understood that while all of those around you and while you yourself may identify yourself to the outward world by your outward appearance, God will identify you by the hidden person of the heart. 
In other words, God will identify you by your soul. So what I ask all of you today is this. Do you know who you are on the inside? Do you know who you truly are in your heart? Do you know who you truly are in your soul? Now, as I have said already, knowing who you are, it is incredibly important. And the reason why it is so important is because there is power in knowing who you are. Now, today we'll see that scripture backs up this notion. We'll see that it backs up this thought through God's only begotten son. You see, the thing about God's only begotten son, Jesus Christ, is that in Jesus, he had to often fight for his true identity. In Jesus, he often had to fight for his identity as his identity, who he really was. It was often questioned who Jesus was, who he truly was. It was often challenged by the world. I would say to all of you that even to this day, the identity of Jesus, it is still being questioned. Jesus' true identity, it is still being challenged today by the world. So I say to you today that, again, it is a good idea for us to look at Jesus and his fight for his identity because it was so questioning and because it was so challenged. And the reason why his identity, the fight for his identity was, was questioned and challenged it will be what we have already discussed here. Power, control, and authority. So let's take a look here at Jesus fighting hard for his identity here today. Now, Jesus' identity, it was prophesied about before his manifestation in the world. You know, in December, in a few months, we'll be singing the songs and we'll recall how Isaiah, how he prophesied that the identity of Christ would be that as wonderful, as counselor, prince of peace, to name another. We know that that was an identity that was prophesied about Christ. If we were to go even further back to Moses, we'll see that Moses, he prophesied to the children of Israel that there would be a prophet like him that they would need to listen to because they would be judged to whether or not they heeded his words. So Moses, again, well before Jesus was manifested in this world, I want you to know that Moses, he identified Jesus as a deliverer. Now, when Jesus was in the world, he was also identified by John the Baptist. Who, when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming to him, just said, Behold the Lamb of God. He identified Jesus as the one that would take away the sins of the world. That again would be a deliverer from all of those who would turn to him and believe in his identity, who he was, he would deliver them from sin. Now, I want you to understand that the prophecies of Jesus' identity, man did not come up with that on their own. Jesus' identity before he was in the world, it was given by the Lord. Now, when he was in the world, in Jesus, he confirmed who he was. Jesus let the world know exactly who he was. Jesus, he identified himself as the light of the world. Have you heard that one before? Jesus, he identified himself as the good shepherd. Have you heard that one before? 
And Jesus, he said to the world that I am the true vine. I believe you heard that one before as well. You see, I, I state these things to you because I want you to understand that Jesus, he knew exactly who he was. He did not need somebody to tell him who he was. However, as I have said here today, again, when you know who you are, people won't like it. When you know who you truly are, you are going to have your haters, aren't you? And I tell you, that was certainly the case for Jesus. Scripture does not hide this from us. Now, here in the sixth chapter of John's gospel, we'll take a look at Jesus after he had just fed 5,000. And down there in the 14th verse, after performing the miracle, after feeding 5,000, some of the people, they turned, they looked at Jesus, and they actually, they actually correctly identified him as the prophet that, that Moses spoke of. Now, though they had correctly identified him, we'll see there that the people... They desired to take Jesus by force so that they could force their idea of his identity onto him. You see, the Jews, they looked for Jesus to be a conqueror. They were living up under the authority of Rome at that point in time. And as Moses had delivered the children of Israel out of the bondage of Egypt, They look for Jesus to deliver them out from under the authority of Rome. They look for Jesus to be a a mighty type of conqueror that was like the emperors of Rome. Now, we're told there in the 15th verse that that when Jesus, when he perceived that the people were set to move and to take him by force, We'll see that Jesus said, "Uh uh-uh, nope, I'm not going to have any of that. And they wanted to make him be that conquering king. But but Jesus, he stepped away from those who were trying to force an identity onto him. Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever tried to force an identity onto you? You better believe they have. (laughs) We all share the same color of skin, and you better believe that that people try to force an identity on you because of the color of your skin. Mm-hmm. Now, to be clear here, those people, they, they did not know, they did not understand who Jesus truly was. You see, all that those people saw was power. They saw power and, and they, they, they felt that they needed that power. They desired to use that power for their own desires. When people, when people see you, when they see what you can do, history shows us that they'll try to use you for their own desires. And I ain't lying about that one. You see, those who are of the world today, they still desire to use you to fulfill their, their desires. They want to keep you away from fulfilling your calling and from fulfilling your purpose, which again is why it is so important that you know who you are so that people don't have control over you. Now, after perceiving the the people's desires, we are told that again, Jesus, he got up, that he left them, that he did not give them the opportunity to force their ideas, their identity on him. Then down in the 35th verse, we'll see the next day that when Jesus had left over to the other side, that the people, they have followed him over to the other side. And those same people that came looking for Jesus. And we'll see that Jesus, he took that moment 
to make his identity known to the people. You see, Jesus, he, he chose now to stand boldly in who he was in his real identity. We'll see that in the 35th verse, my first of the key verses that I have for today, that Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus was making it clear to the people, this is my identity. This is what speaks of me. This is my name. I am. I don't know if y'all remember that. The Lord told Moses back in his day, when he called on Moses, tell the people that I am. I am is the identity of God. He is everything. If you want to know God's identity, Jesus said to the people, I am the bread of life. And as the bread of life, Jesus, he said there in that same verse, and even down in the 51st verse, that his purpose, his calling was to feed hungry souls so that they never went hungry or thirst again. So that those souls would, would go on to live forever. Jesus, again, speaking about who he was. You and I know that Jesus, he repeatedly said that, that he didn't come to be a conqueror. He didn't come to condemn anyone, including those who stand against you. Those who despise you, those who persecute you, those who hate you. Jesus didn't say that he came to, to, to destroy them, to condemn them. Jesus, he didn't say that he had came to, to, to condemn, to destroy those who were over the Jews at that point in time, even though that was what they desired of Jesus. His identity was not that of conqueror. Jesus' identity is that of savior. Now, the real the reveal of his his true identity, when Jesus said that he was the bread of life to those people, those people they should have rejoiced in that moment. However, We'll see here that the people, that they were upset. We'll see here in the second of my key verses here that the people, they murmured, they grumbled. They do what, what we do best. They complained. And then they do the other thing that we do best. They questioned Jesus. They questioned his, his identity. Jesus told them the truth and they questioned it. God shows us the truth and guess what we do? We question it, keeping it real. We shouldn't, like we said in the Sunday school lesson, we shouldn't, we know we shouldn't, but we go against what we know. Now, they would have been thrilled with, with Jesus taking on the mantle of, of being a conquering king. If Jesus, had he picked up a sword right then and there and said, hey, let's take down Rome, they would have said, yes, yes, yes. And they would have been right behind them. Oh, yeah, we, we about to get away from being up under Rome. But Jesus, he said, I'm the bread of life. I'm the bread that came from heaven. And, and those who, who eat of me, they'll never hunger. They'll never thirst. They'll have everlasting life. It sounds like music to my ears. It may sound like music to your ears. But to their ears, it was wobble, 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 wobble. They, they turned around and we'll see there in scripture that, that they asked, ain't this Joseph and Mary's son? 
Who he think he is? Talking about he's the, the bread that came down from heaven that gives eternal life. No, you, you take on the identity of your parents at times, don't you? Oh, I did when I was growing up. Oh, they go to preacher boy. They go to preacher boy. And hey, they were right on that one. They were right on that one. Preacher boy standing tall today. They forced it on me. I accepted that one a long time ago. Jesus' identity, who he was, it, again, it was always questioned. The religious leaders, they always was antagonizing and questioning Jesus. But if we went even further back than that, to right after Jesus was, was baptized, right before he even began his ministry, we'll see where Jesus' real identity it was put to the test. It was challenged. After he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, the devil, didn't he do it? The devil, he always just happened to pop up, don't he? The devil, he, he came along the way to question and to challenge Jesus' identity. Now, I want you to understand Satan knew exactly who Jesus was. Satan knew that that was the only begotten son of God, but that did not stop him. I want you to know today, Satan, he knows exactly who you are. And it still don't stop him from doing what we see him do to Jesus here. In the fourth chapter of Luke's gospel, in the fourth chapter of Matthew's gospel, we'll see the temptation of, of Jesus. And I feel I've referenced this passage of scripture a lot this year. In, this, in, in, in the first two temptations of Jesus, we'll, we'll see where the devil where he said to Jesus, if you are. I don't know if you've ever looked at it this way before. But, but Satan said to Jesus, if you are the son of God. He knew that Jesus was the son of God. But he came up like he was a stranger. If you are the son of God. You see, the purpose for Satan tempting with this line to Jesus was to try and make Jesus question who he was. The devil wanted to create doubt in the heart of Jesus. Imagine that. And as you've heard me say before that that if the devil would do that to Jesus, just imagine the, the kind of games that he tries to play with you. Especially since he knows who you are. You see, your adversary, he will often try to get you to doubt who you are. You are a child of God. Your adversary knows it. And so your adversary will say, hey, if you are, if you are a Christian, if you believe in God, if you are a child of God, before your adversary then moves on to some wild hypothetical question or some wild hypothetical situation as they try to, again, create doubt in your heart. Why do you suppose, again, that they are doing that? You see. Creating doubt in the heart, that's the biggest weapon in the arsenal of your adversary. When one gives in to doubt, when one begins to second guess who they are, they can hesitate. They can then again be reluctant to move in who they are. When you are a child of God, when your adversary sows doubt in your heart about your identity, who you are, 
your adversary is trying to make you hesitate, be reluctant, and moving in faith. Again, like I said, there is power in knowing who you are, and your adversary is trying to take away that power. You see, when one stops moving in faith, they lose their power. They lose everything when they stop moving in faith, when they stop losing or using or knowing who they are. When you don't know who you are, you lose everything. See, the devil desired for Jesus to give up his identity. In other words, the devil in that temptation, I don't know if you've ever looked at it this way. The devil desired for Jesus to give up his power, his authority, his control over himself. He desired for Jesus to fall down and to worship him. He desired for Jesus to, to fall into sin. Now, had Jesus did that, had he gave up who he was, had he gave up his identity, you and I, we would be lost today. We wouldn't know who we are. We would have absolutely no power. We would have no authority. We would have no control. If it has not been made clear to you just yet, I want you to understand the world, your great adversary, they want you to give up your power. They want you to give up who you are and then live in a service of them to live in servitude of their nature, a nature that is wicked, a nature that is evil, a nature that is sin. Do you know who you are today? Sadly, many of us, we don't realize that the fight for who we are, we don't realize that it is a spiritual battle. Knowing who you are, it's not a worldly battle as we may think it is. Knowing who you are, it is a spiritual battle, just as we have seen here today. So again, I ask you, do you know who you are in your heart? Do you know who you truly are in your soul? As you have heard me say before, you are more than your name. And I love my name. I love being named after my dad. I love being Leo Hash McCrary II. I love that. I love the color of my skin. I love being black. But again, I want you to understand, you are more than your name. You are more than the color of your skin. You are more than the history of who you are. You are more than the history of your people. And again, I love the history of my people. There are certain aspects that I don't care much for, but I love how my people, how we overcome. I love that. But again, I want you to understand, as much as I love those things, we are more than that. You see, some of us, we, we think that we are our bank account. Again, some of us think we are where we work, where we go to school, where we grew up at. And again, I love where I grew up at. I love where I went to school at. But again, I am more than that. See, the way that the world tries to define, the way that the world tries to identify us, it's all superficial. It's all surface level. Nothing in depth. But as I have said, you are more than the superficial. You are more than what someone can see on the surface. See, every last one of us, we are defined by what the world cannot see. You are defined by what lies within the hidden person of your heart. You are defined, you are identified by your soul. And that's very important for you to understand. Because God, he's going to identify all of us. He's going to identify everybody by 
not the outward appearance, but by the soul. God, he will identify our hearts today as one or another thing. He will identify your heart as either being a law abiding heart or a corrupt heart. We will either be identified as holy and righteous or as evil and a sinner. Do you know which one you are? Who are you? Is what I ask you today. Jesus, or just as we had to learn our name as children, I say to you today that you need to learn who you are in your heart. You need to learn whether or not you are a law abiding believer in the Lord or whether or not you are a wicked and disobedient sinner. You need to learn. You need to know that today. For all of us that have consumed the bread from heaven, our identity has been assured as that of a child of God. Now, our identity as a child of God, it won't satisfy everyone. We know this. Jesus said that his children, that they would be betrayed by parents. Jesus said that his children, they would be betrayed by brothers, relatives, and, and friends. Jesus said that we will be hated for his name's sake, for his identity, our identity as his child, we will be hated. And those that are of the world, again, I say to you today, because you identify as a child of God, they will try to force you to take on another identity rather than that of being a child of God. They will try to force you to conform to the identity that they have. They will try to force you to conform to the identity that is of the world, that is acceptable by the world society, our society, if you will. Will you conform or will you stand boldly as Jesus did in his true identity? Will you stand boldly in your true identity today if you know that you are a child of God? I encourage you today to learn to know who you are so that you can stand boldly. Again, I encourage you today, learn and know that you are a child of God so that you can stand boldly, so that you can identify as just that, God's child. You see, you should be happy to be a child of God. I don't care what the world says. You should be happy to be a child of God as there is power in being one of his own. I encourage you today, be like Elijah. We know how Elijah was. Elijah, he stood boldly before all of Israel on Mount Carmel. He stood before a great multitude that included 450 prophets of Baal. And Elijah, he said to that multitude, I alone, I'm standing here alone as a prophet of the Lord. Whereas Baal, he got 450 over there. As we know, Elijah in his bold stance as a servant, as a child of God, we know that he went on to challenge those 450 prophets. And he did it at a time where Ahab and Jezebel, where they had killed many of God's prophets. He did it at a time where he should have feared for his life, but he stood boldly as a child of God. And we know that he was rewarded in that day. We know that he won the challenge. You see, I say to you today that you and I, we live somewhat during a similar day where the world laughs and the world mocks us, where some of us, we may feel like we are alone as a child of God. But I tell you today, don't be afraid to be alone. Don't be afraid to be different. Don't be afraid to be unique. God has made you so as a child of his. 
Sadly, many of us, we let Satan doubts get to us and we cave in and, and we conform and we lose our power, power that has been given to us by the Lord. And we end up doing nothing but suffering where God has not made you one of his own to suffer. Don't ever doubt who you are as the doubting heart, like James said, is one that does not go rewarded. Again, I want you to understand today that God has saved you. He has made you one of his own in order to bless you, in order to reward you. I say to you today that when you stand in your identity as his child, you will move forward in life with purpose, with great confidence, with peace of mind. And as it is said in scripture, all things are possible to all of those that stands as a child of God. David, he said at best, David, he said that thanks be to God. Again, you know that all things are possible. And then he asked, what can man do to you? Man can do absolutely nothing when you know who you are as a child of God. So again, I say to you today, stand firm, stand boldly in knowing who you are as a child of God. Never let somebody tell you that you are not a child of God. You know who you are. And Jesus said he knows his sheep. The Lord knows who you are. Stand in that faith. Amen. 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 Amen.